Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on one thing, single barrels. Best of all, you can try before you buy. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution so you know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and who from the industry may be coming in to visit. The ABV Barrel Shop, it's where single barrels live. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers traveling mini bars that are no bigger than a small purse or toiletry bag. Best of all, they are fully customizable so you can create the perfect piece that is unique for you. If you own your own business, what a fun and unique way to promote what you do. Check them out online at thebartogo.com. That is the number two in the bar to go. If you have wholesale questions, call my friend Isabel Clark at 504-481-1297. Finally, we are sponsored by the Neely Family Distillery. NFD is a family-owned business that keeps ringing up awards in the spirits world. Head to Sparta, Kentucky to experience the family history, award-winning spirits, and meet the Neely family. Check them out online at neelyfamilydistillery.com. Now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we complete our discussion of Old Crow by talking about what it could be. My name is McNew. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, and our special guest, Vaughn Neeters. Hey, gang. What's up? Hey, guys. Hello. Hey, oh, so yes, Old Crow. Imagine it coming back and a commercial. They could even get like a car going like, uh, car, car. Because uh, it's crows, you know, you, it's on the yeah. TV commercials, and, and people pick up on that. It becomes a whole thing. You're in bars. It's like, uh, don't order old crow ca- caught uh, to, down to you. And it could be a whole thing. But we'll talk about these ideas. What could they do with this brand? Uh, but we'll get to that after the break. For right now, McNew, so there's something you want to talk about. What is that? Okay, I think this is a weird me quirk. But is there yeah. a utensil you guys just cannot stand to use? So I was like on Pinterest looking for recipes and there was a mac and cheese recipe, but the person put a spoon in it <laughs> and it ruined my whole fucking day. <laughs> it ruined it. It it's ruined a, it. It's a fork meal. You do not use a goddamn spoon unless you're no. a toddler or elderly. I like the spoon on the mac and cheese. I hate it. It, it does oh a God, better job. It's, it's, it grosses me out. I, like, I, don't I always use a spoon. I like the no. spoon. No. Yeah, the spoon's better. You gotta get the, get the cheese. cheese. No, you gotta like fork it. I want a fork. I don't want a spoon for anything. I really don't like spoon foods. But I just spoon I think foods. Make- what about ice cream? Do you eat, do you eat ice cream with a fork? Like no, you eat it out of a cone, so you don't have to do any of that. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking fascinating. Huh? Uh, uh, huh? Wow. Uh, the, any utensil problem? So you don't like spoons? I, well, where does this come from? I like. What spoons. about soup? So what I don't. Was- eat- all, just I eat hot it. liquids. Yeah. You just don't eat it because it requires a spoon. No, I just don't enjoy it. It's hot and it's liquid. I don't like that. What about pudding? Pudding. Not a big pudding girl. <laughs> don't like. Sauce. No. Uh, creme brulee. Yeah, that's good, but I'm gonna be probably weird and try to do it with a fork. I don't want a spoon. <laughs> and so I talked to. This is not just a me thing. Apparently, it's a family thing because my cousin was like, "I cannot stand spoons either." I don't know what weird childhood trauma we had where we're both like, "Fuck a spoon!" Like we can't do it. But neither of us like spoon or spoon. So, Von Eaters, <laughs> you come over to the house. Uh, it's mac and cheese, uh, and that's all you get. You're you're in some. I don't know what crime against humanity you've done, but all you can eat is mac and cheese. <laughs> but you do. We give you allow you to keep your dignity by choosing if it's a spoon or a fork. What would you take? Would you take the fork? That's all you're eating. So you're not no. like, well, I need this for the other uh, portion or whatever. Uh, so it's uh, so you. No, I'm, go- I'm going spoon because I want to be able to scrape all the cheese off yeah, the side. The spoon's better. The spoon is the way to go with the mac. I like to eat efficiently. Normally, normally, the only reason why I'm using a fork with my mac and cheese is because it goes with you know the meats or whatever. You're not, there's not typically a spoon issued to you with the with the meal, uh, but if the spoon's available, I'm going spoon. This is interesting to me because I think we <laughs> want to stab the noodles like you do spaghetti. No, like, yeah. So are, are you fingering the bowl after you're done to get all the cheese out, or you just waste all the all the extra cheese? 
you can scrape, <laughs> you can scrape <laughs> it with the edge of a fork. You don't need a spoon to scrape the cheese. Not only on the sides, though. The bottom is all curved. You're not getting in there. I don't, I don't the want the bottom. The bottom is just done. You just rinse that out and put it in the dish. So uh, let's oh. let's let's take this back just a step. When you when you're preparing the mac and cheese, and, and let's not go grandma's homemade and it's all oh. these steps and all that. Let's just go some sort of box uh, mac and cheese. Are you are you mixing it up with a fork? What are you what are you that's, mixing up with the cheese? That's with a mixing spoon, which is different because that doesn't go in my mouth. I don't <laughs> like spoon in my mouth. <laughs> what about what about if there's stuff left on there? Like you, you know, X amount of your flavoring stays on that spoon. Are you going to lick that spoon, or you're you're like so anti spoon you don't even? Yeah, no. Uh, so you can lick a spoon because your tongue comes out of your mouth. It's not going in your mouth. It's different. You're not feeding yourself. You're licking it, so it's out and not in. That's fine. <laughs> I don't want to eat with the spoon. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? I don't, <laughs> I don't understand. I don't it's understand a, it's either. A, it's like a texture. It's a sensation thing. But I'm like, ugh, immediately, no. If it involves a spoon, I'm very uninterested in eating whatever okay. that is. Okay. But oh. The only, all right, so so the, the question, uh, as weird as it got there, the question is, is there a utensil you don't like? There is one I don't like. There's one utensil that I don't like, um, and that is, do you ever see, like, it looks like a butter knife, but if you look close, it actually has a little thing for cutting on there. It's actually a little sharp. Uh, it I like, like, the butter knife that has just the thing that you really can't cut anything with. And then sometimes you get ones that are a little serrated. So it's like, I think they're trying to give you something in between. It's not a steak knife, but maybe like if they're, if, it'd be like if you, they gave you chicken, you could cut chicken with it. Uh, but you can't, have you, you guys ever seen that? that you type talk of about knife? like just a regular like dinner knife, you mean? Uh, uh, yes, a dinner knife, I guess you would call it. Yes. I like the butter knife, not the dinner knife. And I'm not talking about the little, little butter knife. I'm talking about the, the full standard size butter knife. Oh. I like that. Not the not the dinner knife. If, maybe that's the official saying. I don't. I don't know. I, it's, I. I just. I don't know. I thought you meant butter knife, like the little short one. No. No. So yeah, I, I get what you're saying, Steve, because they come in every knife set, right? Like your standard knife set. Yes. Not yeah. Really the knives. Yeah. Those yeah. have never bothered. I've never really thought about them too much, but I get it. I can see okay. why those would be annoying. Because a butter knife's going to do the same damn thing. You don't need it to be that sharp. Right. Right. Fine. Yeah. See, I don't know. Right. I think I, I think I almost prefer those over butter knife. Butter knives are useless. I rather oh, have butter something that can, good. I rather have something that can cut through more than just butter. You know. What? What do you need? What do you? What? What are these meals you're having that you need to be cut <laughs> Anything. Use a steak knife. Use well, a steak I don't need, knife. If you if you cook the steak right, you don't need a steak knife either. Well, what? Are, there are things you need a steak knife for. There's well, of stuff. course, but I yeah. don't know. A steak I don't knife. I have to is use cool. a steak knife over anything. A good steak knife is awesome, though. I mean, You're if right. it's got yeah, if it's got some some girth to it, and it's not, then I I like hey a now. good steak knife. Hey now, I don't like like a little flimsy steak knife either. That's another utensil. Oh knife. no, you got to have good knives. Oh yeah, my mom had the really cheap ones because you know she was cheap uh, when I was a kid. I didn't like that. I did. even as a child, even though that probably better suited my child hand. I didn't like it. I wanted the, the thicker uh, uh, knife. Yeah. Yeah. You like the girth. Yeah. And then when I went to, uh, to a restaurant, a fancy steak restaurant, I stole that knife yeah. <laughs> because I wanted that knife at my house. I didn't want my mom's cheap knife. I wanted my own knife. Yeah. yeah. This, hmm. this reminds me of my grandma's knife. So they were old. She never replaced anything. And like right. whatever the fasteners were, those got loose. So you would try to be cutting something and your knife would just wiggle in the handle. We were yes. dangerous, and she would oh, never yeah. replace these damn right. things. We're ancient. My mom, just, the they, same they, way. They still, they still work. No, it's going to fly off and cut somebody. This <laughs> happened <laughs> just the other day. On Mother's Day, we were over at my mom's house, and my mom had these old, stupid knives. I, they're like uh, acrylic. They're made. They're clear, and, and this is her like, because she has like everyday stuff she has like fancy stuff she has thanksgiving stuff and then she has yeah. like her casual party uh stuff and this was casual party and the uh, cat goes to cut something and this knife just shatters in her hand but it, it flies the the knife part flies the food flies uh, it's a whole thing yeah. Not everywhere. Oh. Yeah. Terrible. terrible that leads into what i hate plastic okay, utensils oh. plastic they always break 
Yeah, okay, but well, you, you gotta have them for cookout season, though, because what if you get the have, nicer ones? No, yeah. you have the outdoor trash, no. and you don't let your good stuff thrown in the outdoor trash because that's gonna happen. You gotta have them for cookout season. It's I, just, it is, it's a thing. I don't like the ones that have bend to them, but you get the ones that are the harder plastic, a little bit harder plastic. Yeah. They don't really have any bend. Uh, those are better. They're too yes. brittle, though. I always find those breaking. Not the brittle. You got to get the perfect. It's 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 the perfect one that has not. Uh, it, it's it's not brittle. It's it, but it doesn't flex either. Yeah. Hmm. So, uh, the white ones, the ones that are white, are absolute trash. They're way trash. too flexible. But the clear ones are like a little more sturdy. So you got to get the clear ones. Yeah, I, see, I don't like you. I don't like either one. Another thing I don't like is wooden, like the the wooden spoons and stuff. Why why do you have that? Why do you have that? Because they look nice. <laughs> they look nice. Well, the wood spoon. Yeah, they're not. Ta you're talking mixing there, or, or yeah, yeah, like the big stuff, the yeah. stuff that you use why, for why, cooking. What is, like, what is that point? I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't like. I don't like those either. Plastic the, or metal. The the wood ones, you can't get them clean enough, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. I feel like I feel like all the stuff gets inside of them, and right. you're never gonna get them all the way clean. It's permeable. Yeah, yeah it's, I, it's I don't not, like that. I don't like that either. I don't like that. We'll see if we can get that discontinued. I'm going to put that li uh, list of... I have a whole list of things I'm going to do if I'd ever be uh, uh, elected president of the United States, and that, that, that can go on the list. Yes. Uh, these will all be executive orders that I'm going to execute. So this is good. Congress can do. They can't be blocked or anything. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's some of the stuff that's going to happen. So we'll see. All right. Well, guess what? On that note... This is one of, one of few things I support. There you go. It's time to drink. What is everyone drinking? I'm going to go first this time. I'm going to go first. I've got uh, Yellowstone. This is a uh, limited edition from 2020. 2020. Right Ooh. there. There it is. It's the COVID bottle. COVID bottle. Here we go. Swine on the set. Solid. Solid. That might be enough. It would have won last time, I feel. So we'll see how it does this time. All right. McNew looks like she's ready. What do you got there, McNew? Um, I have a Starlight pick from Indiana Bourbon Club, and this one was finished in sherry barrels. Okay. No, I still have – I've maintained my leadership position. No, all right. Next up is Von Neters. I have a Little Book, Chapter 7. 7. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Was that enough, McNew? Did he win? I think he did. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, mm -hmm. when you throw it to a judge, Von Neters, you have to accept it. As wrong as it is, you have to <laughs> accept it. So, Von Neters wins. Cheers. Cheers. All right, we'll take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to talk about Old Crow and what it could be. We'll do that in just a few. Okay, let's talk about the people that make these shows happen. First up is the Stave and Thief Society. Via their in-person class at Moonshine University in Louisville, Kentucky, the Stave and Thief Society is the place where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge an executive bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my executive bourbon steward certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Speaking of executive bourbon steward certification, the ABV Barrel Shop in St. Louis, Missouri has developed a unique partnership with the Stave and Thief Society to offer a preparatory class to assist you in getting your executive bourbon steward certification. This prep class costs only $25 and is available to take live or online via Zoom. Graduates of our class receive a coupon code good for 15% off your executive bourbon steward certification held in Louisville, Kentucky. This saves you almost $90. Additionally, you can collaborate with fellow attendees to split travel costs when you go to Louisville. If you're interested in signing up for the class, simply head over to abvbarrelshop.com and check out the classes and events page. Last but not least, we are sponsored by Neely Family Distillery. Royce Neely is the 11th generation distiller and one of America's oldest distilling families. A visit to Neely Family Distillery takes you through family history, where you can see all the artifacts and newspaper clippings through the years, from this family that started distilling in America after James Neely arrived from Northern Ireland in 1740. Today, Royce Neely and his team are crafting some of the best spirits in America. 
Their bourbon and absinthe offerings keep winning top honors in the spirits competitions. Recently, their absinthe made history as the first platinum winner in the absinthe category at the San Francisco Spirits Competition. Neely Family Distillery is definitely a bucket list destination if you are a bourbon fan. Learn more about their spirit offerings, visiting their facility, and the awards they have collected over at neelyfamilydistillery.com. Freddie Mills of Roos. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today is part two of talking about Old Crow. Today is what it could be. What it could be. Anybody got any ideas what Old Crow could be? What could Old Crow be? So, I think if they're just trying to get rid of it, yeah, I think maybe. I mean, it might. It, it's definitely going to cost them some money to do this, but I think maybe they should start finishing some of it. Finished Old Crow. Okay. Yeah. Start start throwing it in some different barrels and uh, maybe seeing if they can get a good, better taste profile out of it and okay. you know, brand it as Old Crow finished in whatever, you know? The Old Crow finish series. Yeah. 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 Okay. That makes some sense. Mm. That, and then uh, they can that... kind of mark it up a little bit too. Yeah. Yeah. I would, uh, yeah, just elevate it a little bit, you're saying. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because there isn't. I mean, it could still be a bottom shelf to even if they added ten dollars, yeah. you know, to to, to yeah. the to the price tag. Uh, it's still, uh, uh, you know, under any, un, un, you know, for seven fifty, you're talking twenty dollars now. Uh, I think by anybody's measure, that's still a very cheap bourbon. So it become like the uh, the finished series of of value bourbons. Uh, that could be a very good idea, actually. Yeah. That could yeah. be that might be one of the one they need to run with. That could that could be. Oh, what do you think, McNeil? Um, so I like the idea of elevating it, but I think you bring it back and call it vintage style, like vintage old crow. Yeah. And they get some science guy in there that tries to replicate the taste of what it used to be. It's not going right. to be exact, but you try to bring those flavors back because it used to be great. If you've had those chessmen, it's one of the greatest True. things in the world. Uh, you're never going to get that again, but you could get close to it. And we call it vintage style old crow. And it doesn't have to be crazy expensive. $40 for that, I think people are still going to buy it. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, it's not a bad idea. Yeah. One thing they used to do at Old Crow, this should be something they bring back immediately. One of the old bottles, you have to Google this, the audience who hasn't heard this before. They used to have a bottle called the Traveler Bottle. It was designed to put in your suitcase. Hmm. And literally, was it was flat as opposed to, you know, most bottles are round. And uh, they're going to take up, you know, more space. The idea is if it's flat, it, it'll go into a suitcase easier. And the other thing, it had leather straps across the top to keep the top on so the top doesn't accidentally pop off. Now, is the top on there? You're thinking, well, it's going to get jostled around the suitcase. No. It actually had leather straps that like a little belt buckles on there. I think the, the, the I think we're at a time now when it's time to bring back the traveler because, you know, uh, when that was out, you could you could carry on a bottle of Old Crow. Well, you know, you 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 just have that in your carry on. Now it has to be uh, you know checked in, in your check baggage. I think the the, the traveler bottle uh, with with check baggage is much better. I think there's uh, some security to it. So I like that. That's a fantastic idea. Yeah, I, should, and I, should come I knew I knew these existed, but I just Googled it. And that's like a nice looking package design too. Right. Could, yeah. It looks sleek. It looks cool. And it's you know how many they would pocket. sell? Uh, they would kill with that. Yeah. yeah. You know what? And speaking of bottles, if they do what like McNew, like what you were saying is try and replicate that old recipe, put out a couple decanters. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They certainly had plenty of the couple different styles. Yeah, kind of the uh, you know throwback to what they used to have back in the day. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. And I think people like we always love nostalgia, so bringing something old back, it's just going to fly off the fly off the shelves. We want it. Yeah. yeah. It's happen. Yeah. It's cool. Um, it's like a wooden club. It's so cool. Another thing they could do with Old Crow is, again, if they wanted to get into advertising, you know, not only the thing I was talking about, the, the call uh, for the call brand, but they could also uh, focus on Dr. Crow. You know, Dr. Crow, they could create a, a person who's, who's playing the character of Dr. James Crow. He's one of the most interesting people in the world of bourbon, and he's largely forgotten now because, 
you know, Beam's not really pumping him up. They're not putting any ads out about him there, but he, he, he's, he's a guy who should be remembered for all he did for bourbon. He's one of the true first true, you know, real scientist type to be involved in bourbon. And, uh, I think that would be a good thing. You could do some cool ads around the man himself the, that started the brand, Dr. James Crow. Yeah. Oh. I like that, and I don't think you cartoonize him, but you kind of make him like the KFC right. Colonel Sanders. Like right. he's iconic, oh, yeah. so you make him that big character, and mm -hmm. then people think of your brand. Like I don't really buy KFC, but I love Colonel Sanders. Right. Like I think, yeah. yeah, you bring that story to life. I think people would be interested. Yeah, yeah. I don't think yeah. that would be a bad thing. Yeah. So, Doctor James Crow, bring him back. So, yeah. Uh, I, and there's unlimited things they could do with old age stuff. I mean, Beam has old stock and, and there's, there's plenty of cool things that they could do with some of that old inventory, you know, a cast strength, uh, you know, special release once a year, super elevated. I mean, that would be cool. And, and that's something that Beam doesn't play a, a whole lot in. I mean, uh, yeah, they've got little book, but they don't, they don't have a lot of once a year, limited edition, single releases. So, so this is a brand they could do something with, I feel. I, and I think they should because there's Crows and Halloween. Every October, they should do a special release. Mm -hmm. There you I go. Like, I, I would buy the shit out of it. <laughs> so. This is true. This is true. So there you go. There's just a couple ideas. It's almost unlimited. Matter of fact, we're not going to give away all of our ideas because you know what? We want to be consultant. So maybe Beam will bring us in and be like, that show was fantastic. What more do you got? Give, give us more. And we'll be like, okay. Well, let me tell you something. And you write a number on a paper, and then you turn it around and then you slide it. You got to do that. You don't just write it down or you don't yeah. just say it. You got to you got to write it down, spin it, and then push it and be like, yes, yeah. you give us that. And then, yes, we're willing to share. Yeah. And, and then, yeah. Um, it has to be something insane so they can talk us down to what we really want. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So this might work. It might work. We might get some of that beam money. That'd be great. So there you go. There you go. Well, we'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find them. Von Neaters, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? You can find me on Instagram at Von Neaters. All right, McNew. On the Instagram at McNew ABV. For me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website. That thing's abvnetwork.com. You're going to want to check that one out. Everything that we do is out there. Previous shows, blogs, so much more, abvnetwork.com. Come by and see me. The ABV Barrel Shop, we've always got cool things going on there. We're always getting in new barrel picks, and it is a place where you can try before you buy. That's pretty special, so check us out online, abvbarrelshop.com. McNew, anything else to say before we get out of here? I'd like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review. That includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, we ask that you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABV Network. Great job today, gang. Farnets will have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. Bye. Peace. Before we let you go, let's talk about one last thing, the ABV Barrel Shop in the St. Louis community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on a couple of things. First of all, single barrels. We are the place where single barrels live. We go to distilleries, taste through the whiskey, select the best barrel, and have it shipped to our store where we present it to you, our customers, by allowing you to try before you buy. We're also known for the classes that we have in our education center in the store, as well as the events we have with industry professionals from the bourbon business. If you are in the St. Louis area, please come by and visit us at 6 Fox Valley Center in Arnold, Missouri. Or at a minimum, at least sign up for our email and text distribution so you know exactly what's going on in our shop over at abvbarrelshop.com. This is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network, signing off. We thank you for listening to our programming and truly appreciate your support. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.